Hi, in this video we are going to use the sensors of a device running Tramontana as inputs for a sketch. To demonstrate how this works, we can use the attitude scope example that you can find in the Tramontana examples for processing. So check the IP address of the device running Tramontana and make sure that it matches with line 27 where you are instantiating the Tramontana object. If we run the example, you can see that there is a plot that reflects the motion of your iPhone's gyroscope. Let's try now to make a custom program using the device as input. Let's create a new sketch importing WebSocket and Tramontana. Let's create a new Tramontana object called box and let's instantiate it with an IP address of your device. The paradigm to receive inputs from your device is not dissimilar from what you are used to in processing. To listen to mouse or keyboard events, you are used to write your code in methods like on mouse pressed or on key pressed. The Tramontana ecosystem leverages the same exact mental model. To listen to the gyroscope, for instance, or the change in attitude of your device, we can just specify the function on attitude event and write our code inside it. The function on attitude event has four input parameters. The first one is the IP address of the sending device. The other three are row, pitch, and yaw. To demonstrate that this works, let's just try to print uh, yaw, for instance. If we start the sketch though, nothing happens yet. We need to tell the iPhone to start broadcasting its gyroscope data. Let's start broadcasting the phone's attitude after a mouse pressed, calling the subscribe attitude function on the Tramontana object. We are passing to the function subscribe attitude the frequency of updates. One will be once per second, 15 will be 15 times per second. It's very important to set a limit to not strain the network. As soon as I press the mouse button, the iPhone started sending its attitude 15 times a second. Now I'm going to create a global variable yaw, so I can take the yaw value from the onAttitude event function and influence the sketch with the values from the box. So as a personal goal for this tutorial, I decided to create a triangle or an arrow and I influence the rotation of the arrow based on the rotation of the box. To draw an arrow or a triangle, I can use the function that is provided by processing called triangle that uh, needs three vertexes to be drawn. I'm drawing the triangle on the origin, as you can see now. So the first thing I need to do is first increase a little bit the size of the sketch. And then I'm going to move the triangle from the origin to the center. And I'm going to use the function translate. So the next step is to apply the rotation. If we apply the rotation before the translation, you can see that the triangle will be off screen. So let's try to rotate off 90 degrees. In this case, half pi. So if I put the rotation after the translation instead, you'll see that the 
uh, arrow is correctly rotated of 90 degrees. Now we are ready to add yaw to the rotation. So now, as you can see, I need to first click, and then as soon as I click, the sketch is affected by the rotation of the box. So as a second step, I want to also influence not just the sketch, but the behavior of the iPhone itself. So let's say that uh, if I turn more than 45 degrees, I want the iPhone screen to turn on or the box to light up. While if I'm turning below 45 degrees, I want the box to be dark. To do that, I will create a state variable called is turning more than 45 that would be useful to determine the first time I'm changing the state. So on the onAttitude event function, I'm going to create an if statement understanding if yaw is going above 45 degrees and if it's the first time that that condition is met. So yaw is bigger than uh, p divided by 4 and it's turning more than 45 degrees is false. So it's the first time that that condition happens. So in the case in which yaw is going above 45 degrees and it's the first time entering, I'm going to make the box vibrate. So I'm just going to invoke make vibrate on box. Let's take into account the other condition in which the yaw is below 45 degrees. In that case, and when there is a change of state, I want, first of all, to restore my state variable to false. And I want the screen to turn black. To do that, I want to invoke the function setColor on box. The function setColor accepts four parameters. The first three are RGB, and the last one is the brightness of the screen. To make the box light up in the first place, we are going to do box.setColor in the previous condition and specify all the values as 255, the maximum value. So we are going to test, and as you can see, when the condition is met, the screen lights up and the phone vibrates. So I'm going to very quickly add a background, so every time the condition is met, is above 45 degrees, I'm going to change the background color to blue, uh, and otherwise uh, the background color is going to be white. So in this tutorial, you have learned how to use your device running Tramontana as a set of inputs. You have also learned how you can mask your device to become a completely different object that still have interactive properties.